Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, uh, and in this video we're going to look at basic game states in Allegro 5. Uh, one thing I want to talk about here real quick is that I would like this video to be uh, a very brief introduction into what states are. Uh, this, uh, the, this part of the series is not going to be an exhaustive study of, of how to maintain states uh, and, and state machines and things like that mostly because to do so requires the use of, of object-oriented programming classes things like that um, and since this is more of a beginner series uh, I'm not going to get into that so mostly we're just going to cover the theory of states and, uh, and, and, and how they work and what we can do with them and how we use states to kind of uh, turn what would normally be just a one-phase game into a potentially multi-phase game. I'm going to start off here with some shell code. Uh, this is my, my shell code application. Uh, and so go ahead and uh, download, download that if you don't have it already and then so you can follow along. Uh, one thing I want to do real quick is uh, I want to lay down some, some ground rules or some flow to my states. All right. So for this application, what we're going to do is we're going to have effectively three states. Uh, we're going to have a menu state, a playing state, and a game over state. Uh, these states aren't actually going to do really anything. They're just going to be states, okay? Uh, and they're going to to represent theoretically how these states would would flow in an actual game. And so we're going to have certain key presses that'll move us from one state to the next. Uh, along with that. Uh, I'm going to need to change the way some the way we handle certain key presses. So, for instance, uh, right now, uh, if you look down here, I see that uh, whenever we hit the escape key, we're just doing done equals true. All right, I don't want to do that for this video, so I'm going to come to my keys enumeration, and I'm going to add escape as an option. I will add one more false here, and now we're just going to monitor whether the escape key has been pressed or not, but we're not actually going to do anything with that. So let's go ahead and change our inputs here. So instead of saying uh, uh, done equals true, we're going to say keys sub escape equals true. And I'll just copy that, come down here, uh, and do keys sub escape, sub escape equals false. Okay. All right. So uh, that's that's first and foremost. Okay. So uh, when I talk about escape, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a state, what I'm talking about is simply just some way for the game to know what mode it's currently in. All right, the state of the game. Uh, and like I said before, we're going to have menu playing and game over, and we're going to use a very simple integer to track this. Okay. Um, though since we're going to use integers to track this, uh, we can use an enumeration to make things more user friendly. So you don't have to remember like state four is this state and state five is this state. All right, we can just use an enumeration to keep track. So I'm going to do enum state, and my states are going to be menu, playing, and game over. Just like that. Okay, so those are my states right there. Fantastic. Now, in order to keep track of states, one of my project variables here, I'm going to have int state, and I'm going to set that equal to menu. We're going to start off in the menu state. All right, from there, it's just real simple. States may seem you know, maybe complicated or uh, how to manage them may seem really complicated, but they're actually, you know, fairly simplistic things. Um, sure, you can have very complex systems for managing them, and large scale games have very complex state systems. Um, however, the, the concept of states is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. So basically, all I need to do is I need to figure out what state I'm currently in and update based off that. So I'm in my game update section here. And I'm going to have a very simple if structure here. So I'm going to say if state double equals menu. And we'll fill these in in a second here. Uh, else if state double equals playing. Uh, else if, oh man, state double equals game over. Okay. So basically, we're just going to do different updates depending on what state we're currently in. So if I if this was an actual game in my menu state here, I might have all the code for updating a menu, checking uh, whether the users clicked a button or, or or something from a menu system. Playing is going to be my main game mode where my spaceship is flying around shooting comets and things like that. And game over is where I can do some cleanup and and kind of post process and or say hey this is the result would you like to play again things like that. All right. 
I'm just going to copy this code here real quick, this structure, because you're going to see our rendering is the exact same way. We're going to render based on the state we're in. All right, so I'll leave this just like that. Fantastic. Okay. So my states are going to be real simple. Uh, my states are simply going to only allow me to, to go to a different state. All right. Um, we're just going to keep it real simple here. And, and later on, we're going to look at a more powerful use of the state system. This is sort of a primer to get us used to the idea of these states. So what I want to do is I'm going to say if it, well, first off, if our state is in the menu state, if keys subspace, all right, so if they hit the space bar, then we're going to move to state equals play. Okay, so if they hit the space bar while we're in the menu, we're going to start the game. Okay. Else, if we're currently playing the game, all right, and they do keys sub escape, so if they hit the escape key while they're playing, we're going to do state equals game over. All right, now you're going to notice we're not doing done equals true, right, to just exit the game. We're actually going to a state called game over. And the cool thing about this is it gives us the opportunity to say to the user, hey, would you like to play again? And if so, let's go back to the menu state. All right, and if not, then, you know, so be it. Uh, so that's 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 going to be new for us, all right. We're not just going to exit the game right then and there, all right. Um, now, if we're in the game over state, which means we're not playing anymore, and they hit the space bar again, all right. If key is subspace, then we're going to do done equals true. Okay, completely arbitrary rule. Let's pretend I'm the guy uh, designing the graphical user interface and the flow of state, uh, the the flows and states. Um, that's my job. I figure out, okay, I want space to start the game, escape to exit the game, space from the exit screen to exit the game completely, right? That's arbitrary. I just decided that, right? Um, and, you know, complex games have complex systems and yada, yada, yada. So uh, you just got to kind of figure out what's right for your project. Okay. So uh, we'll see kind of what this code means here in a second. Uh, but let's go ahead and cover our rendering. So in our rendering, we're not going to do a whole lot. I just want to draw some text to the screen, um, kind of explaining what's currently going on in the game. Um, so I'm going to do font 18. My color is going to be AL, map, RGB, 255, 255, 255. Um, and then I'm going to do position at width divided by 2, and height divided by 2. The flag will be Allegro align center. And my text is going to be press space to play. Just like that. Awesome. I'm just going to copy this line of code here and paste it there and paste it here. And for this one, I'm going to say press oops, press escape to end. And down here, I'm going to say press space to exit the game. All right. So let's see what this does for us. Let's run this. Okay, so we start off here. We're in our menu state, and our menu state says press the space or press space to play. So you notice I'm hitting escape. Escape's not doing anything. Up, down, left, right, enter, whatever. Nothing's happening. Sure, our update is recording that those keys are being pressed, but we're not testing for keys escape in this state. So that that effectively doesn't doesn't do anything, doesn't affect us at all. Okay, it's escape doesn't do anything, F keys, whatever. Nothing does it. So, okay. Uh, let's hit space. And now boom, we're playing our game. Okay, imagine us having a great old time, greatest game ever, whatever. Alright? Now, okay, space, not doing anything. Okay? Because in this state, we're not checking to see if the space bar or we're not checking the space bar to do anything. All right, or in this state, spacebar might be shooting a laser or whatever, right? The only way to leave this state based on the rules that we wrote is to hit the escape key, all right? Nothing else will work, all right? So this is us playing the game. We're having a great old time. Now I'm going to hit escape. Bam. Okay. So now for us, we can pretend that maybe escape is a pause menu, or maybe escape exits the game and brings us back to a main menu, or brings us back to the menu at the end of the game, like, are you sure you want to quit style, you know? Um, and that brings us here. Okay, so now, escape, not doing anything again. Okay, there's only one way to get out of here, and that's to hit the space bar to go completely out of the game. All right, uh, you'll notice I also didn't write any way for us to go back into the game or back into the menu system. Uh, 
basically if you can do one you can do the other so I'm not worrying about it in this video we'll look at a more robust system in the next video anyway so basically the only thing I can do here I can hit space and boom I'm out of it okay that that pretty much concludes our, our primer on states just just understand it, it it's basically just an integer and a bunch of if statements um, at this level the simple simple design um, and it, it's everything we need to to break our game up into different different play modes uh, and and yeah so real simple design just quick primer the future video or the next video we're gonna look at, at something more of a, of a, a finite state machine uh, if you will that's still that's that's given it a lot of credit since we're not using classes we can't really call it you know a state machine um, really it's just a, a, a simple state system but we're gonna look at something called uh, a, a pre processes and post processes uh, for state changes so uh, stand by that will be in the next video